Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today I want to ask you a question. And the question is this. Why are we so likely to follow orders? Why have we become so obedient? Why are we so tame? If you think about it, if you think about your life, and if you think about the lives of others, isn't it true that we have become a lot more tame and a lot more passive and a lot more likely to follow and obey orders and instructions given to us by other people? I worry about these things and I worry about these matters because if you think back to history, human beings have committed great atrocities not because we are atrocious people but because we are prone to follow orders, prone to do what we are told, prone to go along with the crowd even when it was a matter of collective insanity. Yeah, we live in an age where we are extremely receptive to collective insanity and to blind obedience. And what I mean with this is we can fall in the trap of doing what we are told and to looking at other people for instructions. And what we do is we look to other people for instructions and they look to us for instructions. And everyone is looking to each other for somebody to follow. And that's the root of, you know, group bullying and why groups tend to bond together to do horrible things together. We all look to each other for a reinforcement in what we are doing. Instead of positively thinking, is this good or is this bad, we look to each other to reward the behavior that we are doing. And what can happen is, it can so easily happen that somebody takes to the streets and starts to yell. You know, somebody can take to the streets and they can start to yell and they can start to say something. And it can be completely insane. You know, it can be, I want to murder people. I want to throw people in jail. I want to do great and crazy things. You know, we can get people coming to the streets that are prepared to say and do outrageous things, you know, just to get attention, you know. It's a need in people to get attention. It's a need in people to be heard and feel seen. You know, when people say outrageous things, it tends to be seen and it tends to be very heard. And that's perhaps why we are so attracted by it, you know. We're so attracted to a person that can say crazy things and that can speak with a loud and clear voice about horrible, awful matters of life. You know, we're attracted to watch images that depict, you know, really gross and really terrible things. We're uh, drawn towards listening to people that post really horrible comments online. We're prone to trolling, we're prone to cyberbullying, we're prone to, you know, blind obedience just for the sake of obedience and that can explain the growth and the success of many dictators worldwide in both the west and outside western worlds in both democratic countries and also in less democratic countries or dictatorships so we're prone to these things and we're prone to struggling with these things we're all in a kind of follower complex and we're all kind of afraid of change. It all connects to two fundamental human needs, you know, the need to protect oneself and the need to fit in. We have these two needs, but they are not the only ones. We also have the need to change things. We also have the need to make a difference. We also have the need to speak out for ourselves. You know, the thing is, every bird fears to fly too high. Every person fears sticking their head out of the sand. They need to and they secretly yearn to and they try to always. People constantly try to act and to go against the crowd. You see it on a daily basis. People constantly try in the subtlest of ways to resist obedience and to do things their own ways. People try to say something new or funny or quirky. People try to do something odd and people try to go out a bit. But as a group, as a crowd, we're quite overprotective of one another. We're prone to catching each other and reining each other in. <laughs> That's stupid. <laughs> Why would you say that? We're prone to taking on anonymous identities, commenting on each other's posts, saying horrible things, you know, to cut each other's down, you know. And we're prone to um, make people feel stupid or weird or crazy for wanting to do something different or for having thoughts of their own. 
So we're constantly subtly trying to resist, while also sub constantly we fear the resistance of other people. So we try to do things, we try to be different, we try to stand out, but we also try to keep ourselves protected from rejection and from being cut off. So we're torn by these two completely different needs, you know, the need to fit in and the need to stand out. And we're torn between these two things. And we don't know what to do. Honestly, I feel like we don't know what to do. And we think, I think, that we are past these things. I think we think we live in an age of individuality where people can be themselves and when everyone can do what they want. But then how come when you take to the streets, most people choose to dress the same way, to talk the same way, to walk the same way, to walk in the same tempo, to speak in the same dialect? Why are people so prone to imitation of one another? I believe in some extent, to some extent, we tend to echo one another and to follow one another. And I believe these things are, these needs are even bigger today in an area of social media exposure with Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Constantly we look and we compare our lives to other people. They go out, so we want to go out. They are popular, so we want to be popular. They look good, so we want to look like them. And we look and we compare and we build our identities and at the same time we feel terrible when we don't have individuality. Yeah, people feel terrible when they don't have individuality. When you fit in, that feels nice, that feels comfortable, that's a relief. Whenever you fit in, you don't have to fear rejection. It's a relief to not be rejected, it's a relief to be accepted. But it's not a positive feeling to fit in. It is only when we can be individuals and when we can say our own things and have our own ideas that we can truly feel, you know, that feeling of flow, you know, that kick of energy, that uh, thrill, you know. It's only when we can do our own thing or try something new that we can actually feel that positive energy, that beating heart of, yes, I did something. The intuitive mind is associated with change, but the intuitive mind is equi equally likely to conform. The intuitive mind, just as the sensing mind, has an equal tendency to want to conform or to want to fit in. The intuitive perceiving mind has four tons of ideas, sees options everywhere, possibilities of change in every room, in every situation, a new idea, a new possibility. When you're an INTP or an ENFP or an ENTP or an INFP, your mind is constantly racing between these options of what could I do? Could I do this or could I do that? Or could I say this or could I do that? But you're also constantly torn between that fear of rejection, you know. Oh no, I shouldn't say something because then people will think I'm stupid. I shouldn't share this idea because people will think I'm crazy. I want to do this, but what if people will think I'm stupid for wanting to do it? I want to try this out, but what if I pay fail and people laugh at me? I want to try something out, but what if people say I'm stupid for wanting to try it out? I told you so. I knew it wasn't going to work. <sighs> there he goes with his stupid ideas again. You know, the intuitive mind has this internalized voice of... Uh, the times people have laughed at you in the past or the times where you have laughed at other people or the times where other people have laughed at other people. We internalize, we see, we observe, we know how other people were treated before us. We know what happened before us. And we don't live in a world that celebrates creativity. No, we live in a world that celebrates people that have already been creative. But watch when a creative person draws something new. In the beginning, there's always resistance. In the beginning, people always say no. In the beginning, people say, oh, why? I don't understand. So we're always faced with resistance. We resist the creative, but we celebrate those that have been creative. We say, wow, that was great. That inventor in the past, that was amazing. But we don't say, wow, that new idea could be so great. Wow, that could turn out amazing. Because I think we have an intuitive fear, okay, we have a fear of uh, the intuitive and we have a fear of change and we have a fear of the independent, the people that go their own way. 
We have a fear of the people that try their own things. We have a fear of people who think for themselves. But when you're an INTP, you know, conformity is one of the worst things in the world. Uh, the ENFP mind and the ENTP mind, INFP, all alike, they are the people that can teach us change and they are the people that can and always tend to rise up against conformity. When you meet INFPs and when you talk to INTPs, they all tend to be almost repulsed by people who go at the flow and the crowd and who have no ideas of their own. When you're trying to impress an INTP, you do it by sharing your new ideas and by showing them that you have new thoughts and new possibilities and that you can think for yourself. When you offend an INTP, you reject new ideas, you conform, you do things blindly because you were told. You know, one of the worst things you can tell an INTP is, but I was told to do it, <laughs> you know. Uh, it's one of the biggest insults because the INTP will always be, but you can think for yourself, right? The INTP and the ENFP, uh, one of the things I admired most about these types, the NPs, the intuitive perceiving types, is this ability to think for themselves about change and to see and to read patterns and to make connections and to see options and to be and allow themselves to be different. What I feel is we need to work on empowering these types because I feel often they don't allow themselves to be different enough. Often I don't think we reward them enough. I think we need more intuitive perceiving types in leadership positions. We need them to place them in positions where they can shape policy, public policy on anything from climate change to economics and to how society should be. We need people that can step out of the uh, you know, the traditions that we have and the norms that we have today and that can say, hey, maybe we should try something new. But I feel like in school and in work, we are so stereotyped and standardized. We have all these paths mapped out already. We have all these things put on our desk already. All decisions have been made. All the positions have been put together. All the job descriptions have been written. And anybody who goes out of it. That's why I feel... That's why I feel like what we need to be doing is we need to be rewriting our education system to be more dynamic. We need to rewrite our job descriptions to be more tolerant towards change and new ideas and new projects and new positions and new responsibilities. We need to foster and nurture a respect towards creativity even when creativity is sometimes crazy or outrageous or stupid. And we need to, when people are trying new things, encourage time because I believe new ideas take time. I know the first time you do something new the first time you're learning a new system, it takes some time to get used to it. But I believe we need time and we need to budget for change. You know, every company should have a budget for change. It should put maybe 10% of its money toward change. 10% or 20% of its job descriptions should be about change. What changes can we make? What, how much money can we invest in trying new things? Uh, how much time on a workday should a, uh, one of our employees be working on new projects? How much time should our bosses have to considering to make new structures and to see through and come up with new ideas? Every company, every school, every place we go should give us a budget of change or some kind of uh, ability to think differently. Uh, every community should have an openness to change and an openness to people being different. We need to think about, you know, fitting in in the matters of protecting ourselves. Because, of course, it's important to have a steady economy and a steady finance and a house to live in. Perhaps a company or a society that can provide base security can also provide greater innovation. A community or a country that can support people while they're working on a new business idea or a new project is also going to have a lot more ideas than a company that 
forces people to think on a day-by-day -day basis on how do I feed myself and how do I clothe myself. We force people to be way too practical in a, way, in a world where we need so many more ideas. So I'm going to end this video with a question to you, and that is, do you need change right now? Are you happy with status quo? Do you want to follow orders or do you want to try something new? Where are you at in life right now? What is your feeling about change right now? What would you like to change right now? What would you like to be different? Do you find yourself fearing to stand out too much? Do you fear being rejected too much? Do you live in groups that are too intolerant towards your new ideas? Do you have friends and family that are too resistant to change? Do you have a workplace that is too critical of new ideas? And what can you do then? What can you do then to empower new ideas in yourself and other people? Are there other people out there like you that want to change just like you? Are there people out there that need your support that are trying something new? Are there people out there that need your leadership and your ideas? I know this is a political video, I'm sorry, but I think we need those sometimes. Thanks for watching this video and feel free to leave a comment down below, we'll leave a like, leave a dislike, share, subscribe and visit patreon.com if you'd like to support, patreon.com slash ericthor if you want to support more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next